just need to put it in context, it's only February that the Council set its budget for this year. Uh, we set a revenue budget of £130 million. Uh, it's made up of the £70 million uh, that central government gives us to spend and the £60 million that we raise on council tax or through council tax. Uh, government saying to us in June we're taking £4 million of that away is really pretty tough. So I have to say there's been an awful lot of uh, really painstaking work and soul searching in coming up with what we believe to be the least damaging uh, package of measures to save that £4 million that we can. Uh, Chief Executive Bob Coomber described this as an unprecedented situation probably yeah. since 1945. Is that accurate? I think it is. I, I don't know of any time in the history of local government where a central government has said a third of the way through the year we are now taking away money that we promised you. That has never happened before. That, that really is unprecedented. And then to be told that next year and the year after and the year after we're going to be taking money away to the effect that we might take somewhere between 25 and 40 percent of, of what we uh, have been giving you is, yeah, I mean, it's truly unprecedented. So what's the atmosphere? Week. Um, I've met with Bob Coomber and other senior officers of the council with upwards of 500 uh, members of staff at a series of staff roadshows. Uh, and we've been pretty blunt, we've told people just how bad the budget situation is and what that might mean to them in terms of their jobs and their futures. And I've been really touched by just how supportive uh, the staff have been and how up for this challenge they really are. They know that it's going to be tough, but the staff here are really determined uh, to, to, to see the job through and to balance the books over the medium term. One of the criticisms from the, from the Conservatives is, is regarding the whole process, regarding things like you mentioned, 10 parks, but not being specific with mm. things like which parks. Is that, is that, just to begin with, a fair criticism? I, I don't know that it is a fair criticism, really. I think you have to look at the pace of what's going on here. Uh, it is unprecedented to be given this news from government in June and then to say that you know, for every month that you leave the decision, uh, the decision gets you, you know, worse by... by you add another 10% of the bill in, 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 actual, in actual fact. So we've had to move quickly. What that has meant is that we haven't been able to give as much information, as much detail, as early as we would have liked. But, you know, I'm just a little disappointed that people are getting hung up on the process and aren't joining in the task of looking at the policies uh, and looking at the detail and helping us to deliver these, these savings in a way which does least damage to, to people who live in the borough. But they are saying they haven't been given enough time and there's not enough true scrutiny in the whole process. Do you think that's fair? No, I don't think that's fair at all. You know, I have to say that uh, Conservative leader, Deputy leader, Shadow Portfolio holder were all given the detail before members of my group and I insisted upon that. You know, I insisted that the Leader of the Opposition, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition were three weeks ago now uh, given the opportunity to meet with me the Chief Executive with my Deputy to go through the, the numbers, not just to go through the generality, but to go through the detail. You know, they didn't take that opportunity. Uh, you, you know, you, you can only make the offer so many times, Michael. Do you not think they might be thinking in a game of political chess that they're being lured into some sort of trap? You'd have to ask them. Okay. In the, in the budget document there's a, two, there's a series of appendixes, mm. isn't there? And one yes. of them is the what possibly could, yep. could, could happen. Some organisations have said they've, the first knowledge they got of possible cuts, so to speak, was mm. by looking at online. Do you not think somebody should have rung around these different organisations and said, just to let you know, give you the heads up? No, I don't think so, really. I think that the, the appendix that you're referring to is what, what I call the think piece for, for next year. This is directors first pass uh, what areas might might be uh, where, where savings could be made. Just because you see something in there, it doesn't mean that that is a saving that's going to happen. Uh, equally, if something isn't in there, it doesn't mean that, that it's immune from, from, from a cut next year. Uh, you, know, you, you couldn't possibly have sort of telephoned everybody that might be some, somehow affected. And, and that's the other thing that people sometimes forget. You know, I ask somebody to do a piece of work, uh, which was just to tell me how many services the council delivers. Uh, when I asked them for an update last week, they said they got up to 120 something and were still counting. So when it comes to cuts, etc., etc., every time I seem to be up at um, Orsett Hall, I continue to see on there 
organisations using the building uh, Farrett Council? Are we going to still see that, or is that something that's going to go? No, it's something that's, that's just got to go, Michael. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, the only events that have taken place at Orsett Hall since we uh, took control were those that have been uh, pre-booked. Uh, you know, I've, I've made it clear that, that those days have just got, got to end. Uh, you know, I have to say that, that there, there will be some events, I guess, that will still go on there, uh, but everybody now will have to get two or three quotes to see where they can do things that, the most cheaply, and you know, we, we have to take the cheapest option. The Chafford 100 Library, um, mm. do you think that was a bit cheeky of you, or your, indeed your portfolio holder, to make the comment about big society running itself? I think running yourself was just a, a little bit harsh. Uh, I think what we've attempted to do in, in a really difficult situation where we have to find this £4 million in the middle of the year, unprecedented, is to try and do it in the way that is least damaging. Now, folk from Chatham 100 told us that they really didn't want to see the library going. By and large, they understood the pressures. What we've done is to say, we'll meet you part way. You know, we will secure the, the, the library for some sessions a week. Uh, and I, I think it's quite reasonable to respond to David Cameron's challenge, because it is a challenge to all of us, uh, the big society, involve your communities in helping to deliver some of these services. So I, I think it's a, a, a reasonable challenge, and one that I hope that the Chapter 100 councillors will be up, up for in, in, embracing, so if they can harness the, the capacity that is within that community to, to, to help deliver a full and comprehensive library service there. The new chief executive doesn't start for a couple of weeks yet, but is he involved in the process at all at the moment? I believe he's in the building as we speak. Uh, you know, just because he hasn't started doesn't mean that he hasn't been here. He's been spending quite a bit of time here, quite a few days, uh, making sure there's a proper managed effect, handover affected, as you, as you would imagine, with, with Bob Coomba, uh, getting to know senior staff, getting to know some members. I see you in, in operation, I see v v Valerie Morris Cook, isn't it? Bob Coomber, Sean Clark, etc., Lorna Payne. How, how involved are the other cabinet members in this whole process? They are absolutely fundamentally involved. You know, you know I have to, have to say, one of, one of the differences that I think you would have noticed is that when we have cabinet meetings now, it's members of the cabinet that present the reports, it's not officers that present the reports. And I am absolutely confident that any one of those portfolio holders could have answered any question on any aspect of their budget. Because I have to say, they have been working their socks off uh, to, to make sure that this budget was delivered in, in at least a damaging way as possible. Uh, you, you know, people with really big areas like Tony Fish, Diana Hale, have done an immense amount of work. Lynn Worrell has done, again, an incredible amount of work uh, within her area. And then working together as, as a team, supporting each other, challenging each other, Make, making sure that we get this right. Uh, I, I think that it would be just unfair of you to caricature this as being purely me and Val. It, it, it isn't. It's a team of ten, and it's a really pretty strong team of ten. You mentioned Tony Fish, and that alerted me to adult social care. In both appendix, um, there's a lot of references to possible cuts in respect of adult social care, yeah. from the Collins House could close, etc., down, down to Meals on Wheels prices. It, it, why does that seem to stand out? Is it just me, or why does it stand out so much? I think it stands out because it's the, the largest demand-led service that, that we have, and we have to look at ways of managing that demand. So what I think you're seeing is a bigger series of options. Uh, and again, I, I have to say, just because it's in there doesn't mean it'll happen. That, that's a menu of choice. Are you expecting a robust discussion of the budget? I hope so. You, you know, I, I genuinely hope that all 49 members will come having thoroughly read the document, having thought about the situation we're in, and having their own ideas for areas that, that we can improve efficiency, change the ways we're working to, to make these savings. What I hope we can avoid is some sort of pretty turgid debate about the process. Let's get down to the detail, let's get down to the meat of the thing.